Hello everyone. Let's get started with our practice. Today we're going to start in mountain pose. When you're ready, come to standing and shine your palms to face forward. You can close your eyes if you'd like or keep a soft gaze to the ground in front of you. Bring your awareness to your body and allow your tailbone to lengthen down and your heart to lift up. Relax your face and your jaw. Let's take a moment to take a deep inhale through the nose as we reach the arms up and overhead. And an exhale to bring the arms back down by the side. Two more times at your own pace as you inhale to rise the arms and exhale to lower them. One more time matching your movement to your breath. And when you're done, we'll bring our hands together into a prayer in front of our heart. Our intention for today is interconnectedness. In this practice, we will see that everything in our body is interconnected. If you are, let's say, tight in your hamstrings, it may cause tightness in your back and vice versa. These parallels can be found all throughout the body in your yoga practice. We can also see interconnectedness in our daily lives as well. For example, if you have a deadline for a project or assignment and you don't manage your time to get it done properly, you may find yourself cramming at the last minute to get it all done. You may even stay up late and lose sleep, which will cause you to wake up feeling stressed or overexhausted. Then you won't have much energy to be productive the next day and you may find it creates a snowball effect. You may even lash out or take it out on your loved ones. And so you see how a lot of things in our life are interconnected. So let's start today with our bodies. And then we'll from there be open to allowing this awareness to trickle into the other aspects of our life. To begin, we'll move with our breath just as we did a moment ago. And this should help to loosen up the hamstrings a bit. However, if you feel any intensity in the hamstrings, you will want to bend your knees a good amount. I recommend at least a soft bend for everybody. Let's inhale, reach those arms up just like we did a moment ago. Big stretch. And using your exhale, we'll swan dive as we let those arms go down. We'll fold over our legs. As you inhale, let's find a flat back. So we'll slide our hands to our shins and lift halfway, making a 90 degree angle from our upper body to our lower body and exhale to fold. Keeping those knees a little bent, inhale reverse swan dive, keeping your back straight, reaching those arms up overhead. And as you exhale, let's take hands to heart center. We'll do this a couple more times. Arms go down through mountain pose and inhale to reach all the way up. Exhale, soft knees hinging at the hips. We swan dive and fold. On the inhale, we'll take those hands to the shins, lifting halfway, pulling the shoulders away from the ears, and exhaling to fold a little bit deeper. Soft bend in the knees, inhale, reverse the swan dive, reaching those arms all the way up for the sky. And exhale those hands back to heart center. Last one, passing through mountain pose as you inhale, reaching all the way up. Exhale, swan dive with a flat back to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. It's okay to keep those knees bent even here. Exhaling to fold. Inhale, we'll reverse swan dive, rise it all the way back up. And exhaling, hands to heart center. Good job. Notice how you feel. Before we continue, we're going to warm up and, and release some tension that we hold in the fascia and the feet. So we're going to use a tennis ball or a small round ball, a lacrosse ball works if you have one. And if you don't, don't worry, you, you can use like a, a food can or even just your hands for this massage. So if you're using a tool um, or a, an, a prop, Go ahead and stay standing and just begin to roll out 
the bottom of your foot. Really making sure to feel into all parts of the bottom of the foot as you roll out. And if you're not using a piece of equipment, go ahead and have a seat and just take a moment to use your thumbs or maybe even a fist or your knuckles to really get in there and massage out the bottoms of the feet, trying to really cover the entire surface area. When you're ready, just switching to the other foot. A lot of times tension in our feet, um, tightness in the arches, um, or fallen arches maybe even can create a um, tension in the in the lower back. So as we massage out, we might notice in the next pose we do a little bit more freedom than when we first started this practice. So go ahead and finish up your self massage, your foot massage for both feet. And when you're ready, just putting any equipment off to the side and coming on back to the front of your mat or the front of your space. Awesome. One more time today, we'll inhale, sweep those arms up and overhead, big upward stretch. And as you exhale, soft bend in the knees, we'll swan dive down to fold. This time we're gonna hold here in our standing forward bend pose. In this pose, measure about two fists between your two feet and keeping those feet just the slightest bit pigeon toe so that the outside edges of the feet are, out, are parallel with one another. Let your head hang heavy. Bend your knees enough for your belly to drape over top of your thighs. And feel free to hold opposite elbows if it feels good or rest your fingers on the ground or even rest them up on something sturdy for more support. If you'd like, you can add in some movement. Maybe you sway a little side to side or gently rock forward and back. Just encouraging the spine to really pour out of the hips here as we use gravity to really feel this calming surrender. Take a couple more breaths and notice how you feel. If the hamstrings are on fire, you can bend the knees a little bit more. Or on the flip side, if you need a little more stretch, you can work towards making the legs a bit straighter, but please try to keep the belly draped over the thighs so that you have the integrity in the spine that we're looking for. One more breath here. Beautiful, calming posture. And then slowly from here, you can release any grip that you have and bend the knees enough to plant your palms. We're gonna walk our feet back into like a plank, a top of a push-up position. And then we'll lower our knees, followed by the rest of our body in a long line all the way down onto our belly. After some of all this forward bending, it's important to find just the opposite and really open up into a back bend. So we'll work into our Sphinx pose. Let's climb on up to our forearms. So that those elbows walk forward underneath the shoulders and the forearms are parallel to one another with the palms facing um, down flat onto the floor. Try not to have any bridges at your wrists. Everything's nice and flush with the ground. From here, I imagine as though I am opening up the curtains to my heart by really pulling those shoulders back isometrically drawing the elbows towards the hips and really shining the heart forward. Keep the chin parallel to the ground, which might feel a little tucked, and continue this isometric movement of just drawing the heart forward, pulling those shoulders back to help take out any rounding in the upper back body. Notice how you feel in your sphinx pose as you shine your heart forward, taking another breath. and then release all the way down onto your chest and we'll walk our hands underneath our shoulders, pushing up through hands and knees. We're gonna bring our big toes together to touch and sit all the way back towards our heels. Find a comfortable position for your knees. They can be all the way together or even a little wider than your hips about the width of a yoga mat if you'd like. So wherever is most comfortable here, 
rest your arms, rest your forehead down, or make a pillow with your hands, and take a few breaths here in child's pose. Child's pose is a wonderful calming posture for the whole mind and body, and it's a great resetting pose before we move on to the next pose. If your ankles or your knees need any cushion, you can al always put a rolled up blanket or something soft either under the ankles or even in the pit of the knees to help you find a little bit more relief. Awesome. From here, we're going to slowly walk our hands in and come, out, come up to a seated position where we extend our legs out in front of us, preparing here for our seated forward bend. We're going to work uh, one of a couple approaches today in our seated forward bend. And this one's really um, more hamstring, uh, uh, brings more awareness to your hamstrings. So extend those legs out in front, keeping your feet flexed, toes straight up for the sky. And see if you can sit up nice and tall as though you were growing the spine up like a stem out of those hips, out of your roots. And if you have a hard time sitting straight up with the legs extended, you can do one of two things or maybe even both. The first thing that you could do would be to place a cushion or a rolled or folded up blanket underneath your hips and then sit at the front edge of that blanket. Another option, like I said, you could do one, both, or even none, is to place a rolled up blanket right under your knees so that you take just a little bit out of the hamstrings as we work this seated fold. Once you're able to find your most successful uh, length up through your spine, Take a deep breath in through your nose, sitting extra tall. And as you exhale, begin to walk those fingers forward, hinging at your hips, keeping your feet flexed, and only going so far as you can allow your back to stay straight. So a lot of times here, we just round over those legs, which might cause uh, either too much for the hamstrings or um, it takes away the benefit from the, the spine. So ultimately, this is the, the most authentic way to practice this pose. However, after holding and, and engaging some of those supportive muscles in the back body, it might feel nice to go ahead and just round over those legs. Let's just take a couple breaths there to relax those muscles that we just kind of built up um, that will ultimately help us on and off of our yoga mat um, to improve our posture. Good. Slowly walk those hands in and up. And we'll go ahead and take a scooch forward so we can bend those knees. I'm going to slowly roll our way down onto our backs. And if you want more core challenge, reach your arms out in front of you or you can walk your hands down the backs of your thighs as you lay flat onto the ground. We'll cool down with one more hamstring stretch since that is kind of the, the culprit here of uh, freeing up our back, that interconnectedness again coming back into our practice. Um, so after this practice, you might even just notice how your your back feels, even though this was a very hamstring intensive practice. So let's start here by bending the knees, walking the feet onto the mat if they're not already, and extending that right leg straight up for the sky, interlacing our fingers behind our right thigh. And you can point and flex or roll out the ankle a little bit. And then when you're ready, just pause with your right foot nice and flexed. If you need a little bit more, you can extend your left leg out long onto the ground in front of you. And if you even need a little bit more, now that we are sufficiently warmed up, you can walk your hands behind your calf or your ankle or some even the bottom of your foot. Just be cautious you don't want to hold the back of your knee. 
Breathing into the back of your thigh, that big hamstring muscle for a few more moments here. Knowing that if you are really tight, you may even use a strap or a belt and wrap it around the bottom of your right foot and hold on both sides if that feels a little bit better for you. Taking one more breath here, just like this. Awesome, and then we're gonna pull that right knee into the chest, extending that left leg if it's not already. And we'll take a twist. This should get us nice and loosened up into our lower back. So we'll extend that right arm out to the side and use our left hand to cross our right knee over our body. You may like to kind of tuck your bottom hip underneath you, but once you've found the shape, try to keep your right shoulder rooted to the ground. And you can either look up or turn your gaze over to the right side. Breathing down into your lower belly can really help to uh, allow this twist to really detoxify the spine. Awesome, we'll gently bring it back through center. Really situate your, your spine into length on your mat, your hips are centered. And then we'll bend both knees, walk the feet onto the floor and extend that left leg straight up to the sky, holding behind the left Thigh, and just maybe rolling out the ankle or pointing and flexing the foot a few times, just loosening up. Eventually flexing that left foot so the heel presses upward and the toes draw down towards your nose. Feeling free to stay here, or if you do need a little bit more, perhaps you extend your right leg long or even climb your hands up a little bit higher knowing that we don't want to lock out this leg completely. Typically, it's not so much of an issue if you're just holding your leg um, with your hands, but if you are using that strap or belt option around the foot, sometimes we have the tendency to lock out the leg. So just make sure that you, you're not locking out the leg so that you can prevent any overstretching or injury. I like to imagine as though I'm breathing into really the, the belly of the hamstring, the center of the muscle, really sending that, that breath, that life force, that freeing energy into the space that is typically pretty tight for all of us. I mean, our hamstrings are used to walk, they're tightened when we sit, um, really anything that we want, that we do in our, in our life, I think can cause tight hamstrings. So when you're ready, we'll go ahead and move into our twist. So we'll pull that left knee into the chest and extend the right leg out if it's not already. Letting that left arm go out by the side, we'll use our right hand to cross the left knee over our body, coming into that twist. Knowing that you can always place a cushion under your knee if this is a little too much especially in order to help keep that left shoulder rooted down. You can either look up or to the left side as you take a few breaths down deep into the belly. Really wringing out the spine with our, our twist and our breath. Awesome, slowly coming back through center. We'll give ourselves one big hug here. So giving ourselves a hug around those knees, you can pull your forehead in, creating a little bit of tension before our final surrender, our full body relaxation. Awesome, and slowly just letting the head rest and coming into your final resting posture. And this can be in a constructive resting pose where your knees are bent, feet on the, the ground, the feet will be a little wider than the hips and the knees rest in on one another. Or if it feels good or you wanna try, you can come into corpse pose by extending your legs out. The feet would be a little wider than the hips so that those legs are at about a 45 degrees angle away from the hips. 
And this should help to just let the feet flop open and the legs completely relax their grip. Sometimes in corpse pose, people will have a little tension in the lower back. So if you have that tension, come back into your constructive resting pose. You may rest your hands on your body as a gesture of turning inward, or you can rest your palms to face up a little bit away from your body in a really receptive gesture to close out your practice today. Let the eyes softly close and I'll leave you here for a couple of moments. So really just enjoy this time. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to be anything. You don't have to tend to anybody or anything. You just get to be the witness of this moment and this time and space. Easy breath, easy body, easy mind. If you notice your mind wandering, bring your awareness to the easy breath that's just moving softly in and out of your body. And as you are ready, slowly begin to invite a deeper breath back in. Opening your mouth, you can just let it all go. Slowly start to reintroduce movement back into the body. You can wiggle your toes and your fingers. And we'll roll our wrists, roll our ankles. And then walking those feet together, legs out long. Let's take our arms overhead, full body stretch like you just awoke from a deep rest. We'll bend our knees, walk our feet onto the floor. And rolling over onto the right side for a moment. This, this side, using the right arm as a pillow, symbolizes a, a real calm energy. And forward folding, like we focused on today, really invites in that same calming energy. So feeling free to take whatever you learned with today's practice, forward folding or interconnectedness with you off your mat and into the rest of your day. As easy as you can, slowly press your way up into a comfortable seated position, easy pose or sukhasana, sitting nice and tall, taking hands together into prayer in front of your heart. And thank you so much for taking this time to practice with me today. The light in me sees the same light in each of you. Namaste.